Hey guys, it's me, Seren, back to another video. So we are on our 14th day of Hidden Figures, which means we are officially halfway through the month and we are halfway through Hidden Figures. Today's Hidden Figure was highly requested, um, another Afro-Latinx activist, um, Sylvia De Del Villard, excuse me, who was born on February 28th, 1928 and died February 5th, 1990. She was an actress, dancer, choreographer, and Afro-Puerto Rican activist. She was known to be an outspoken activist who fought for the equal rights of the black Puerto Rican artist. Del Villard was born in Santurce, Santurce? Let me know. A section of San Juan, Puerto Rico. As a young child, Del Villard would entertain her parents, Augustine and Marceline Del Villard, with her dances, and she was also a good student at school. Del Villard received her primary and secondary education in the Santurce or Santurce section of San Juan, Puerto Rico, where she was born, and upon graduation, the Puerto Rican government awarded her with a collegiate scholarship. Sylvia went on to study sociology and anthropology at Fisk University in Tennessee. However, after enduring the anti-Black racism and discrimination that was rampant in the South regions of the United States at the time, she returned to Puerto Rico and enrolled in the University of Puerto Rico where she earned her degree. Upon graduating, Del Villar traveled to New York City and enrolled in the City College of New York. It was during this period that she was to develop a passion and love for Africa, joining the song and ballet group The Africa House and tracing her African roots to the Yoruba people of Nigeria. While in New York, she also took advantage of her stay to study with Sonia Rudenka and with Leo Braun, the latter a vocal teacher and vocal coach of the Metropolitan Opera Chorus. Sylvia began her professional career in her home country in 1963, singing and reciting at the Ocho Puertos del Viejo San Juan nightclub. From that moment on, she devoted herself to the arts, venturing into different genres in Puerto Rico and abroad. As a theatrical actress, she excelled in productions such as La Muerte, Death, La Tempestad, The Storm, and Let My People Go. She also worked on the big screen in the productions The Time We Lost and The Americans Came Playing the Violin, as well as Los Traidores de San Angel, hope I got that right, which was filmed in Puerto Rico and was invited to the Cannes film, now I know I'm, can, right? Can, not cans, can, like can, film festival, France. She's shown as a dancer and choreographer in the American productions Valley Without Echo, Witches of Salem, The Boyfriend, The Crucible, and Quimina, and in Puerto Rico, she joined the afro Boricua Ballet, creating different presentations of African and Afro-Puerto Rican folk dance. Y'all know I can't pronounce shit. I'm an uncultured American. I'm trying. In 1968, she founded the afro Borica El Coqui Theater, which was recognized by the Pan American Association for the New World Festival as the most important authority of Black Puerto Rican culture. The theater group was given a contract which then permitted them to present their act in other countries as well as in various universities in the United States. A lover of the poetic work of Louis Pelles Matos, Del Villard opened the Louis Pelles Matos Theater in the 70s in his honor. Located on San Sebastian Street in Old San Juan, she presented various artistic projects at the theater before numerous controversies and noise complaints with the neighborhood caused it to close its doors. Feeling the complaints about the theater were racially and politically motivated, Del Villard went on a voluntary exile from Puerto Rico, returning to New York, where she founded a new theater group named Soninke. Soninke developed a close relationship with the Museum of Natural History in NYC and presented several Afro-Bariqua artistic works there over the years. In 1981, Del Villard became the first and only director of the Office of Afro-Puerto Rican Affairs of the Puerto Rican Institute of Culture, and in 1989, she was diagnosed with lung cancer. She returned to the island to receive treatment for her condition and died on February 5, 1990 in San Juan, Puerto Rico. At the time of her death, she was working on a cultural project called Port Africa. In 1993, Banco Popular del Puerto Rico produced a musical with the participation of many noted artists titled Ocho Puertas, Una Espacial para la Historia, which paid tribute to Del Villard, among other artists. In the East Village of New York City, there is the Sylvia Del Villard program of the Roberto Clemente Center, a Spanish day treatment program named after her. In Chicago, there is the Sylvia Del Villard Hall at the Segundo Ruiz 
Belvis Cultural Center. And unfortunately, I don't have any quotes from her, um, but I do, I will have a lot of information in the description box. Um, a couple of the links are solely in Spanish, but using um, the Google Translate page, you should be able to read it. And hopefully you guys enjoyed this hidden figure. I can't believe this is hidden figure number 14. Can't believe we're halfway through the month uh, and halfway through daily videos. As always, hopefully you guys have been enjoying them. I will see you next time. Sylvia Del Villard, a hidden figure. Peace.